Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace, and this is my mandala art making program in P5JS. Every time I press new art, you get an original piece of art that never existed before and will never exist again. I can change some of the settings and get something completely different. New style. I can change the settings again and get something like this. And it's just got endless possibilities. There's a link in the description. You can play with this for free in your browser. Uh, you can also save a JPEG of it if you want. So then you can put that on your wall. We can put all the settings to random and just see what happens. Sometimes you get some weird stuff. So more about this coming up. In this video, I'm going to be showing off the different features of the Mandala Art Maker. I'll also be talking about the journey that I went through to get to this point, the different things that I tried, and I'll show you some of the concepts involved in the coding, though I'm not gonna go line by line with all of the code. I'm gonna do a separate video where I start from scratch and make a version of this mandala maker. So watch for that video coming soon. So the first option is the number of petals. Right now everything's random, but I can click this to unrandomize it and petals i'll drop the petals way down and we'll click new art and you see i've only got uh four and if i go up a little bit more and if i go all the way up to the top you get this many petals so i believe that's going between eight and 30 petals the second option is number of layers so this is how many circles of petals uh different colors so i can put this all the way to the bottom and you'll see just three colors, I think. Let's up that just a little bit. And then we can go all the way to the top, and this is the most number of layers. It's easier to see what's going on with the layers if you decrease the alpha a whole bunch. I'll talk about that in a second. You can see there are lots of layers. The third option is the alpha, so uh, decreasing the alpha all the way makes everything see-through so that's pretty cool and then increasing the alpha makes it not see-through so all the colors are very bright and vibrant then there's the option do you want an outline of the petals or no outline so outline looks something like this uh, maybe if I increase the alpha you'll be able to see that better and then if I do no outline, then I get something like this and the colors kind of blend together. Let me decrease the alpha. There we go, that's better. And then third option is style. So this is what kind of curve it's using to draw the uh, petals. And it's a little difficult to tell what the styles are, but I'll try style one and just click a little bit. That's really nice. And then we'll do style two. So kind of hard to tell, but let me go move on to the next one and you'll be able to tell what the style is doing after this. So if I go uh, more overlap or less overlap, so are the petals distinct is less overlap and if the petals are just overlapping more then that's more. So we'll try the less overlap first. Let me put the petals to 30. And so this is where if you got style two and less overlap, you get something like a throwing star shape. Whereas if I have style two and more overlap, I get something like this. And then if I do style one and more overlap, I get this. And then if I do style one and less overlap, I get this. If you have the petals not on random, you're gonna get a more uniform picture, especially if you choose an even number of petals, 30 versus 29. But if the petals are on random, you're gonna get more imperfection, but also more like spirals happen. And this is because it's picking numbers that are not round numbers for the number of petals. And I actually kind of like that it's imperfect, that it's a little odd. 
Let me decrease the number of layers. And you might be able to tell what I'm talking about. So right here, you've got two petals that are right next to each other. Um, so that's the odd part I'm talking about. And then here, these two spikes are right next to each other. You might be saying, how do I know how many petals there are? Well, uh, let me change my display. And so this is the code here. And then right down here is the console. So this is telling me uh, for this thing that I drew, these are the variables that it used to draw this shape. So 26.7 petals. So I thought this would be helpful if you're just getting random art and you're like, how did it make that? Uh, now you can at least know what the variables were that went into making that. So another thing you could do is the stroke weight is right now set to two. We could switch that to five and then we'll do outline and new art. And it just kind of makes things pop a little bit, makes it a little bit more, I don't know, cartoony. So that can be kind of interesting. So before I get into the story of how I created this, uh, I'm just going to ask you if you like this so far, give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel, ring the bell for notifications. I've got lots of arty, art stuff on the channel. There's a playlist. I'll have a link to that in the description. And before I get into the story, I did want to say one thing about NFT art. You might say, oh, could I use this for NFT art? And I say, please don't. Just say no to NFT art. If you don't know, NFT art and crypto coin uh, cause climate change because every time you buy and sell NFT art, computers around the world are racing to try to be the first computer to say, okay, I know who the owner of that art is. And it's a huge waste of energy. And that energy is being created by fossil fuels. So every time you buy and sell NFT art, you're contributing to climate change. So if you want original art, you can use this or you can go down to the coffee shop or the farmer's market and get some original art by your local artist. Let's get into the story. So my idea was to create something like these mandalas. These are just random Google images of mandalas. I think I did a fairly good job. These are definitely have more detail than uh, what I've created. So the first thing I did was I just made circles of circles. This was my first attempt. I also tried squares. I tried rectangles. I tried combinations of squares and rectangles. And I did different calculations of how the squares and rectangles and circles would be drawn. So I got some of this. So that was kind of fun, but not really a mandala at all. I also have this version of the same thing, which is just slightly different, but none of this was really doing the trick. So after that, I started looking at Bezier curves. So this is a Bezier curve, and this has uh, two anchor points at the beginning and the end, and then it's got two control points, which are these red dots. So I can move these red dots around, and you can see how the curve changes as I move the red dots, like so. And this yellow line represents the angle. So let's say I've got an angle like this. This is the command for the Bezier curve. There's an X and Y for the first anchor point, then X and Y for the first control point, X and Y for the second control point, X and Y for the last anchor point. The idea is this is gonna be half of a petal, and this is the angle that I've chosen, and I don't want the petal to overlap this angle. So if this is over here like this, then that means the petals are gonna overlap, which is not really what I'm going for. So I was having some difficulty figuring out how to get these red dots in the right place so that they didn't overlap. How do you tell the computer to do that? Because I want it to be random, so I want to be able to do a shape like this, but I also want to be able to do a shape that's more like this. So how do I do that? I didn't actually figure it out until later, but it involves triangles and trigonometry. So let me add something here. Here is a triangle. So if I have this angle, and if I want this to not overlap this angle, 
then that means I need to calculate where it's okay for this red dot to appear. And actually, I want the first red dot to be like right on this line. So in order to figure out how to get this red dot right on that line, um, I'm using trigonometry. So I know the length of this right here. I know the angle. I know that this is a right triangle. And if I know all of that, then that means I can calculate this, the length of this. So if we look here, the calculation of that is the length of x times the tangent of the angle. And that gives you the length of the y. But at the time, I hadn't figured that out yet, so I started looking at other curves. So this is a different type of curve. It may look the same, but notice that the red dots in the middle stay with the curve. This is called a curve vertex. If we look in the code, there's a begin shape and an end shape, and then points for the curve vertex. So here's that first anchor point and the last anchor point. And then this is similar to the control points for the Bezier curve, but in this case, they're actually part of the curve. And it was at this point that I figured out the trigonometry thing. So assuming I've got the curve, then I need to just make the other side of the curve to make it a full pedal. That's actually pretty easy. Um, I've got the same code here. Let me uncomment it. But for the middle two points, instead of two positive Y's, I've got two negative Y's. So now you can see that the full pedal is there. And I can shape the pedal like so. So then once I figured out how to do a pedal, I did this. So here's my pedal right here on the right. I have to translate to the middle of the canvas, basically telling the computer that this is 0, .00 instead of 0, .00 being up here. We're going to draw this pedal, and then in order to draw this pedal, we're just going to rotate the entire canvas. The computer now thinks, after I've done this rotate, that this is the x-axis, and, and the y-axis is running like this. So then we just draw the pedal again, and then we rotate the canvas again and draw the next pedal. So there's a for loop that starts here and goes all the way until it gets here. So here's my for loop doing that. It draws a shape, it rotates the canvas, and then it comes back here and starts over again until it's gone all the way around. So I'm adding some randomized colors for each pedal. And then I'm adding some layers. So the layer is basically, let's do the outside layer of petals first. And then we're going to go in a little bit, make the petals smaller and more uh, centered. And we'll draw all of those. And then we'll go in a little bit more and make the petals a little bit smaller. And we'll go around and draw them all again. Uh, and that's basically it. Now each time it goes inward, it's drawing a different shape petal, but all the shapes in that layer are all the same. So you can see in this example, it's drawing this petal out here first, goes all the way around, draws these petals, probably the green ones, then it draws these purple ones, and so forth until it gets all the way into the center. It drew these green ones, and then looks like a really dark color right in the center. And if you have the petals on random, then you're going to get even more complicated shapes. Like this is a spiral, basically, because the petals are 24.2. So in order to do 24.2, it's, it's rotating the canvas, but not evenly. So I think that makes it interesting. So style 2 is the Bezier curve and style one is the curve vertex. But I did the more overlap to give it some more variety, and so this is basically saying you can go outside of the lines, you don't have to have to adhere to the particular angle. I also decided to make a user interface. Uh, that was a lot of work and made the code go from 100 lines of code to 300 lines of code. I'm not going to go over that. Doing the user interface might be enough for a whole video just by itself. 
If people are interested in me explaining uh, the user interface, let me know in the comments. I'm going to wrap it up here. Please uh, check this out. Link, of course, is in the description. Again, if you like this video, give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Check out my other artsy videos. Comments are always welcome. Love to see your comments. Be sure to look for a video on a programming of a version of this Mandala Art Maker. That'll be coming soon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.